stuck into making some progress on the S14 Silvia. I would just like to say that welcome back to the world's most confusing uh, YouTube channel where we work between two project cars and even though a lot of work does get done, a lot of things do get filmed. It takes me a fair few weeks or even months in some case to get the footage out onto YouTube. For example, the footage you're about to see of the S14 was filmed four or five or even more months ago and we're only getting around to doing it now. In the previous episode, which I've already totally forgotten what has happened, I gave you guys a mini update on what's been happening with the R34 and that we're planning on painting it. The car has been repainted, but it's gonna take a little while to actually get the footage out. If you wanna see the behind the scenes and live updates, um, check out the Instagram page at Broken Sylvia. But for now, all right, let's try carry this thing. Um, but for now, this episode is about the S14, also known as the Broken Sylvia, and believe it or not, it is not broken anymore. So in this episode, the plan is to give the engine a bit of a refresh with some new gaskets. We're gonna throw on a few aftermarket parts as well. And towards the end of the video, we're gonna slide the engine into the car. Now that the engine has no accessories on it, it was time to take it outside to the wash bay, shove a bunch of clean rags down the intake and exhaust port so we don't get water and dirt down there, soak the block in aluminium or aluminium cleaner for the American viewers and wait for it to do its thing, give it a bit of a scrub and it comes up looking really nice. And that's what I really like about SR20s is you don't need to paint the engine blocks, just use a bunch of aluminium cleaner and they come up looking nice and factory. Two, one, go. Thank you. 
With a clean engine in the workshop, we started off by removing all the exhaust studs and replacing them with brand new ones that came with our six boost manifold from Golby's Parts. Is it still filming? Yeah. How you going? <laughs> yeah, the boy. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> Snaps the halfway. <laughs> Bruh. Camera, is it manual focus? Haha! Snaps the halfway. Haha! the the factory oil pan or oil sump and replace it with an aftermarket one. And the reason for doing this is I believe the aftermarket one has more oil capacity. It's also got doors and baffles. So uh, there's a lot of oil that you know stays in the middle of the sump. So the engine always has oil to pick up from instead of it starving from oil under hard cornering and it going bang, which SRs yes, like to do anyways. Is it rolling? Yeah. So the exhaust manifold that came on the SR20 is a stainless steel cheap manifold. As you can see, it's already been re-welded because it's cracked in the past. Now, because we're on a budget, I can go back and reuse this manifold and risk it cracking while it's in the car. Now, the biggest downside of that is replacing an exhaust manifold while the engine is in the car is an absolute mission and I'm probably gonna scratch up my pretty engine bay. Then the second option you have if you really want to keep things cheap is you can run a standard exhaust manifold, just one of those. Cast iron, you'll pick them up for 50 bucks, 100 bucks, you might even get one for free. Now the downside of the cast iron manifold is the runners are unequal length and it's also cast iron which means uh, the sound an SR20 makes isn't great to start off with especially with that manifold. It sounds really tractory, and that's probably why people don't like SR20s because of the sound, including myself. That is why I RB swapped the S14, but as you can see, things have kind of changed and I had to let go of the RB swap to fund the Skyline build. And to treat, give myself a bit of a treat, I've decided to buy myself a six boost manifold. Now this is by no means a budget manifold, it is it's a thousand bucks, there's cheaper, there's more expensive, so I think it's really fairly priced for, for what it is. It's equal length runners, which means it's gonna make an SR20 sound as good as it can. It's still low mount, so you run your standard turbo and maybe even an upgrade turbo, but the best part about it is you can still run your standard exhaust system without any modifications. It's strong, it's not gonna crack, it comes with new hardware and for the sake of reliability and also sound, I've decided to bite the bullet and just get myself a six boost manifold.
and yet again we are approaching the end of another episode and we're slowly starting to catch up on all the footage I've collected in the past few months. Uh, I would like to give a massive thank you to my friend Preston for all your help with the car. Uh, this was sort of the easy part that we got to but he's a perfectionist, he did everything 110% better than what I would have done it and there's more work to be done. So in the next episode I think we're going to do some fabrication work or show you guys the fabrication work, you know I can't weld to save my life. Um, and then we're going to get the car driving. We're going to explain the reason why all of a sudden we wanted to get this car driving within two weeks. And we're also going to explain the reason why I'm not allowed to drive this car on the street anymore because of Australia's stupid laws. Uh, more to come in the next episode. We'll see you soon. If you like this sort of content, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you later.